I know it's hard to imagine, but human life's stranglehold on Earth is more fragile than we think. I mean, did you know that there were a few times when we were nearly wiped off the face of the planet? The most recent one came in the year 2020, when a threat of galactic proportions nearly collided with Earth. And there is also one major threat that we are still facing to this day. Find out about these close calls in today's video. But first, find out how humankind almost met its end before it even got a chance to set a firm foothold. Number 5. The Glacial Stage 195,000 years ago, things were totally different. It got super cold, like even in the summer, and glaciers were expanding everywhere, ruining all the habitats. It was so bad that it was called a glacial stage, but let's be real, it was more like an ice desert stage. Deserts got bigger too, so pretty much everything was cold and dry. And you know what happened next? Our human ancestors in Africa split up. They probably did it on purpose since their living spaces were getting smaller, or maybe they just got bored and wanted to travel. Either way, it was a total bummer, and it took a huge toll on the human population. Like, some experts even think that there were only 600 people left on Earth at one point. Yikes. But then the ones who survived got super lucky and smart. They were lucky because they found a sweet spot near the sea in South Africa. The ground was perfect for growing plants that stored energy in starchy tubers underground, and the water was warmish and had plenty of shellfish. So they had enough food to get by, but they also helped themselves out by using the shells as tools. Now get this, some new research suggests that the last humans on Earth may have survived by retreating to a small patch of land called the Garden of Eden. It was around 240 miles east of Cape Town, and it was the only place that was still habitable during the Ice Age. That means that all of us humans today are descended from that one little group who somehow held on for dear life. Can you imagine? It's like we owe everything to those guys. Number 4. Plagues Galore Back in the day, infectious diseases were like the ultimate boogeyman for humanity. They were pretty darn good at their job of taking people out. During the reign of Emperor Justinian I, a particularly nasty outbreak of the plague spread like wildfire, claiming millions of lives. It arrived in Constantinople in 542 CE, almost a year after its debut in the provinces. It then spread throughout the Mediterranean for a solid 225 years, finally disappearing in 750 CE. Talk about an extended stay! The Black Rat was the plague's vehicle of choice, hitching a ride on grain ships and carts sent to Constantinople as tribute. North Africa in the 8th century CE was the primary source of grain for the empire, so it was a match made in heaven for fleas and rats. They feasted on the grain and went on to spread the disease like it was their full-time job. In Constantinople, 20-40% to of the population fell victim to the plague. Throughout the rest of the empire, nearly 25% of the people perished. All in all, estimates range from 25 to 50 million people losing their lives to the plague. That's a lot of people, even by today's standards. Then came the Black Death, which arrived in Europe in 1347. But even before the so-called death ships docked in Messina, rumors had already spread about a great pestilence wreaking havoc across the trade routes of the East. The disease had already taken hold in China, India, Persia, Syria, and Egypt in the early 1340s. The Black Death went on to take the lives of an estimated 25 million people, which was about a third of the world's population at the time. If global trade was as open then as it is now, we might not even be here to tell the tale. So let's take a moment to be grateful that we're not living in the Middle Ages and that we have access to vaccines, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this on YouTube right now. Number 3. The Mount Toba Eruption So back in the day, like way back in 70,000 BC, a volcano named Toba in the country now known as Indonesia had a major tantrum and spewed out tons and tons of rock and ash 650 miles into the sky. Like, can you even imagine? It was the granddaddy of all volcanic eruptions and is still the biggest one we know of to this day. The ash from the eruption was about 6 centimeters thick, and it covered a huge area – South Asia, the Indian Ocean, the Arabian, and South China Sea. You can still see the layer of ash on land today. The Toba eruption was so massive that it scored an 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, which basically means it was mega-colossal. To give you an idea of how big that is, it's like two orders of magnitude greater than the largest volcanic eruption in historic times, which was at Mount Tambora in Indonesia. 
That eruption caused the 1816 year without a summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, with all that ash, dust, and vapor in the air, the sun was dimmed for six years. Can you even imagine that? The eruption disrupted seasonal rains, choked off streams, and scattered whole cubic miles of hot ash across acres and acres of plants. Berries, fruits, trees, African game became scarce. This was really bad news for early humans who were living in East Africa just across the Indian Ocean from Mount Toba. They probably starved, and their population plummeted to critical levels. But that's not all. The eruption caused a massive drop in the world's temperature, sending the Earth into another ice age. Some parts of the world experienced drops in temperature of 20 plus degrees, which is crazy. After this, the great grassy plains of Africa may have shrunk way back, which meant that small bands of humans were kept small and hungry for hundreds if not thousands more years. It's hard to imagine, but if small populations of humans weren't able to survive this catastrophe, we wouldn't be telling this story today. And with that, it's now time for today's best pick. Or in this case, worst pick would be a better description. Now, this is a threat that is closely being monitored by scientists. However, there's pretty much nothing they can do about it if it happens. Find out more about this potential extinction event next. Number 2. The Near Miss Hey, did you guys hear about the asteroid that almost ended our world in 2020? Yeah, apparently we narrowly missed a catastrophe that could have been worse than a hangover on a Monday morning. I mean, I had no idea until I did some digging, which just goes to show how unpredictable life can be, you know? So get this, there was this asteroid the size of a football field that zoomed past Earth in June, and it was closer than the moon. Yeah, I know, right? You'd think we'd have seen it coming, but the astronomers didn't even know it was there until after it had already passed us. Talk about a close call. If it had hit us, it would have been like a nuclear bomb explosion, according to those brainy folks over at Purdue University. Apparently, this asteroid, dubbed 2020 LD, was between 89 and 200 meters wide and passed within 306,000 kilometers of the planet. Thank goodness for the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact's last alert system in Hawaii, which tracked the asteroid and figured out where it was headed. Although it's kind of ironic that a NASA-funded project that's specifically designed to keep an eye out for planet-killing asteroids completely missed this one. Now, don't panic. This kind of thing happens all the time, apparently. Dozens of asteroids pass harmlessly between the Earth and the Moon every year. Most of the time, they're too small to do any real damage or they miss us completely, but there was one in 2019 that gave us a bit of a scare. The 100-meter-wide asteroid called 2019 OK passed within 73,000 kilometers of Earth, which is really close if you think about it. They called it a city killer because if it had hit us, it would have left a kilometer-wide crater similar to the one in Flagstaff, Arizona. But here's the thing, the size of an asteroid is only one factor in determining its impact. The speed and angle at which it hits the Earth also plays a huge role in its destructive power. So what if 2020 LD had hit us at a sharp angle and high speed? It could have caused another mass extinction, but thankfully it just whizzed by like a UFO in the night sky. Number 1. The Threat of a Nuclear Holocaust So, you know how those nuclear weapons are like, super dangerous? I mean, have you seen what they did to Japan in World War II? Total destruction and devastation, not pretty at all. And get this, some scientists thought it would only take like 10 to 100 of those bad boys to wipe out the whole human race. Yikes, talk about a buzzkill, am I right? But wait, it gets worse. When those bombs go off, they make all the air all toxic and poisonous with radiation. Yeah, no thanks, I'll pass. And yeah, I know it sounds like a crazy conspiracy theory, but there were times when the entire planet was on the brink of nuclear war. The Cold War was a prime example, with the Soviet Union and the United States going at it like two prize fighters. Those guys had some serious beef with each other. The Soviet Union was all about communism, where the government controls everything, while the US was all about democracy and free enterprise. Let's just say they weren't exactly on the same page. But here's the kicker. Instead of feeling safer, the arms race made things way more tense. And remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? That was some scary stuff, man. The world was seriously close to going up in flames. See you guys next time.